this is Dr. Janet Bruno. Today I want to talk about a very important topic and that is diabetes. Diabetes is one of the more well-known chronic diseases today. However, many lay people and sometimes even healthcare workers misunderstand the exact nature of the disease. So I'd like to take a moment and see, discuss what diabetes is all about and why it is fast becoming a major health concern in the world today. So first off, there's two types of diabetes, type 1 and type 2. Type 1 diabetes was traditionally known as the, quote, juvenile onset diabetes because it manifests itself typically in children and adolescents. And thankfully, this type is less common and accounts for about 10% of all diabetes cases. And the other 90% of diabetes is known as type 2, and it's traditionally referred to as, quote, adult onset diabetes. Now, this happens primarily because of a poor diet and excess weight gain. And while this was originally named adult onset diabetes because it typically manifested itself around age 40 and beyond, today, however, 45% of diabetes cases in children are now type 2. And this is a change of events. And this is actually a very sad reflection of our children's health. So let me explain a little further about what that means. Both types of diabetes have their origin in the problems concerning glucose metabolism. Now the normal process of metabolizing sugar begins with the body breaking down carbohydrates because carbohydrates are present in our food and when that gets broken down it produces glucose which is energy for our body which is necessary. However, that's when things get a little complicated in the diabetes situation. Once glucose enters the bloodstream, insulin is secreted by the pancreas. And this is because insulin acts as a facilitator to help transport and distribute the glucose throughout the body. And that's why insulin is essential, because its presence is really needed to allow the glucose to enter different cells to be converted to whatever form that particular cell needs. But this is where the real problem comes in because the metabolic process is pretty much stopped in its tracks because either insulin is lacking in the body or because the body is unable to use the insulin. So for the type 1 diabetics, the pancreas is actually no longer contains the insulin producing cells that renders the body unable to produce insulin at all. So it's a true problem where there's not enough insulin being produced. And this occurs because of an autoimmune disorder where the body actually perceives the cells in the pancreas as invader cells and the body actually proceeds to eliminate them. So that's called an autoimmune disorder. Now the other type of diabetes, the type 2 on the other hand, is when the body can still secrete insulin, but for some reason the insulin is not able to elicit the desired result from the body. And this is due to a condition that's called insulin resistance, where the body doesn't react to insulin the way it used to. It actually requires higher and higher levels of insulin to get the same effect. So really in both cases, the body's unable to make use of the blood sugar, which resulted in elevated sugar in the body. And the inability to metabolize the sugar and the increase in sugar levels is exactly what leads to many serious conditions. And these conditions include heart disease, stroke, high blood pressure, blindness, renal disease, amputation, and many others. And as you can, can imagine, these conditions are heartbreaking when experienced by children. And to make matters worse, the medical community has really long maintained that modern drugs and surgery really cannot provide a cure for diabetes. However, there's been a lot of research done in this field and researchers have been able to see that diabetes is much more common in certain populations and much less common in other populations. And what they've evaluated is the difference between the populations with high rates of diabetes and those with low rates had to do primarily with what that population was eating. In fact, many studies demonstrated a clear relationship between carbohydrate intake, fat intake, and death rates from diabetes. And the relationship is pretty clear, and that is 
when carbohydrate intake is high and fat in intake is low, the death rates from diabetes is very low. And the reverse is also true because low carbohydrate intake and high fat intake results in a high death rate from diabetes. Now this can be confusing for some people because they know the sugar comes from the breakdown of the carbohydrate, so they may think high carbohydrate would lead to high sugar, which leads to diabetes, but it's really the reverse true. If there's high fat, that tends to relate with the high diabetes complications and death rates. So this really, this research really provided the first glimmer of hope that diabetes can actually be preventable and even reversible. And today, truly, many scientists and physicians and researchers feel that the quote-unquote state-of-the-art treatment and prevention of diabetes is very clear, and that is a plant-based diet. And you can refer to this in the probably the best book on the subject is the China study by Dr. Colin T. Campbell, and he goes into much detail about how the plant-based diet can really lower the rates of diabetes. So there's no drugs needed, no operations needed, but by adopting such a diet completely, the diabetic patients suffering from either type 1 or type 2 diabetes can stand to enjoy a much healthier and much longer life. Now, I went through a lot of information fairly quickly, but I hope it it was uh, presented in a way that's clear to you because it's very important to understand diabetes at a big picture and also realize that if you're diabetic or someone in your family, you really can exercise a lot of control over the disease by what you put into your mouth and how you process your foods. So I hope you found this useful and stimulating. This is Dr. Jana Bruno wishing you a healthy and a happy day.